Hey friends, I want to do a quick, uh, just a quick philosophical, theological review of friendship. That I've been thinking about the friendship. You know, sometimes you know things are spiritual, and sometimes you know we got to be things that are just more of of human emotions and things like this, or just parts of being human, right? So I want to talk about friendship because it's been really hard for me. It's been very lonely. I've um, you know, it's and been on the road and traveling across the nation, and I have passed by our friends and acquaintances and things like this, right? And if you read philosophy, you hear a lot about the loneliness of these philosophers. I never realized it. They are very lonely people. And it's just crazy how they kind of similar. I felt like they lived my life, you know, from a different time and era, right? That even one philosopher said, he goes, if you have one good true friend that, you know, in your life, then you probably lived a good life. It's something like that, right? So friendship is tough, and it's hard to maintain friendships. Friendships take maintenance. They take um, a lot of energy and time and things like this, right? And have to give self-sacrifices. There's a price to pay and everything, like a friendship. So I'm heading somewhere with this. That, you know, it really comes down to, like, three basic keys I discovered. That friendship, there's a behavioral friendship where... I'll meet people, you know, they're very spiritual or it's, it's nice to talk to someone who is not naughty but, who's nasty. You know, they just have, they're very, their behavior is good. They're just, you know, a great person. They have a good heart. They have good intentions. They're not to hurt the world. They help to, to be nice or help, you know, help when they can and stuff like that. But then, so it's behavioral. But then there's, but then there's, I have a lot of behavioral friends that I like their behavior. You know, I'm not trying to judge them or say I'm better than them. I'm just saying that we get along behaviorally, that our interests are to be nice people, loving and caring people, right? And so I'll have a behavioral relationship with them. But then I won't have a, uh, what do you call it, a, um, a you know, uh, a common uh, interest. Again, I'm going to say this. So it's going to, I'm going to put this thought first. You should have done this better. But there's a behavioral a relationship to that friendship, and then there's an interest where you have common interests, and then you have what's called goals and plans of where you want to be in the future, you know, going forward, right? I'll explain that to you. So you have these behavioral interests, and sometimes it can be spiritual even, where I'll have some kind of common ground with a Christian or somebody even from a Buddhist, uh, you know, some that shows the Buddhist or Tibetan or, or just, I'm just throwing those out there, examples of Native Americans. I have a spiritual um, behavioral thing that they behave in a certain way or do certain things, right? And um, and that can actually bleed into the interest, right? Because sometimes we have a spiritual interest with somebody, right? It's probably more in the interest category where we have a common spiritual interest where we want to know more than that's what's here in flesh, uh, more about the you know how do we get here, and, you know what what can we do to be uh, spiritually better, to help bring that spirituality to here to in earth to do better things, right? So, so you get the behavioral, and, get, and then you got the future, um, you know, the future goals or ambitions, right? And the ambitions, like, well, where do you want to go forward, right? And it's like me, I have certain goals. I want to help, you know, create um, some great new things for that I can help out, uh, you know, children who need it or um, just making people's lives better, right? And. So I have these goals, too. You know, I have these goals and these plans. It's, you know, I want to do things. You know, because some of my friends, they just want to go out, get off the grid, and be there forever. But, see, I have, I like people so much, even though they can be naughty, that I still want to engage with them and, and be a part of their lives and experience the world, right? And also, you know, like even cultural things, listening to different types of uh, live music symphony and, and experience the world, all its traditions and cultures, Right? So my interest is to be not completely off the grid, but to still engage. I, I wish you could have both worlds where you could back away from this rough society and avoid all the noise and the hate and the evil and the tax, but, and then also be a part of the culture where you can smooth in and, and be close to this. Like, it's kind of like the big city thing. So you know, you, you know, I, like to, I like to visit San Diego or Los Angeles or other parts of the world, but then there's always a price to pay. You know, there's always those other things that congregate around a city, right? 
So if you're going to be there, you're going to have to expect those other types of people or play, um, uh, things that could happen, right? Uh, sometimes there are some you know, naughty things that happen, you know. Um, so anyway, so my point is this, that yeah, it's kind of like those three categories. To have a true friend that's, that's compatible for me is that I have to have that friendship of behavioral. They, they act good. They behave good. They don't try to rip me off because I've been ripped off by everybody. Um, backstab me, false promises, not there when I needed them, when I was always there for them when, when they needed me, those kind of things, right? So the behavior is good, right? And then there's this, you know, like I said, then there's the common interest, right? So I'll have some friends that their behavior is kind of off, you know, but I have a common ground with them like in physics or mathematics or music or um, other areas. So I have a common interest in them. So my friendship is in the interest category. That their behavior, because I got some great people that, you know, I tolerate their nasty behavior because of we have a common interest and sometimes spiritual. Then I'll be, tolerate their crappy behavior, even though they have a good insight or key. We can have great discussions about uh, an interesting common thread, right? And then, like I said, but then there's the other one, like I said, and then you're going forward, you know, what are you going forward? What are your plans? What are your ambitions? Where, you know, what do you want what, out of life? And, you know, because, and that's the other key too, right? That because we got to keep moving. And this world's about emotions, inner emotion. So, you know, those, those things got to keep going forward. Because I'll have somebody have a really great interest in, for example, you'll see all the time. You have, oh, well, you know, let's, let's figure out what our reality is or what's going on there. This, that's a really cool topic about, you know, we're living in assimilation or, um, you know, we can influence reality or just whatever, right? And, and those are deep ones because I, I don't really like those too well, but as examples. But, you know, we're talking about really heavy spiritual stuff, the common interest one, right? But then they never take it forward, right? I've had people that said, you know, if we just did this, you know, if we settled down and got these things in order and got some people behind us, we could help change this part of the world and make a difference. And, you know, take our spiritual stuff, our knowledge that we know, and keep driving home and, and, and maybe help, you know, start, you know, start a movement, right? But then it all, they always tail off. That's what, I don't understand that. You know, you'll see it all the time. You know, we see it, you see people that will halfway be interested, like even when you start talking about the Mandela effect or you start talking about these things, and then the next day it's like they don't even give a crap. It's like, you know, well, it's kind of like we already discussed that topic, moving on, and don't really care. Nobody wants to follow through on exploring the whys, the whats, and dig a little deeper. Now, you can waste a lot of time going all the way down to those realities and those, those rabbit holes, but nobody wants to further explore, keep their mind just, you know, even physics, I want to learn so much more about all these things about, I've been studying, um, you know, quantum drives and uh, mercury engines that, uh, and magnetic fields and all these things, you know? It's like that, see? And I'm gonna give you an example, I'm, I'm not, I don't have friendship with Roger, but he's one that I could sit down and just, and Roger from Mud Fossil University. Man, I'm telling this guy, I could sit down with him for hours because he's all, he's, he's got his hands on everything. He's like me, he's like studying physics, he's studying, um, he's studying his fossils, he's, he's, his mind is so open, he's exploring everything he can get his hands on. It's so interesting to watch him at, at come up with a new topic. And every time he talks about Medusa sometimes, dragons and, Man, I'm telling you, this guy is awesome, and he's a good teacher, and he's a good coach. He's he's really, I mean, he's the teacher you always wanted, right? And um, and he always keeps an open mind because I talked to him the other day about the assimilation thing, and he said, "Well, maybe," <laughs> but at least he said he goes. I said, "You know, Rod, you might." I said, "Are you going to be in shock when we figure out that we're in assimilation?" He said, "Maybe," and then he so see, like I said, he's not going to throw it away. But he's going to, you know, he, you have to have those mental barriers because it's so much garbage. But the fact that he's open-minded, so that's another part of that friendship where that's actually not in the category of interest or behavior. That could be kind of behavioral, open-mindedness, but it kind of leans even towards the uh, that third category of really exploring, uh, planning the future and what you want to be involved in, you know, being more open-minded, keep moving forward. Roger's one that keeps moving forward with that. And I hope that, that third category is the right one. If it's not... Well, I try my best. Because there's always that third piece where you got the people's behavior right and they got the their interests, 
you have a common thread, like I said, even reading books or studying history, the history resets that we've had, but then they don't have that third piece where, because they'll get trapped, for example, they'll get trapped in Mandela Effect where they just keep doing videos after video after video of every Mandela Effect they see a new one, right? I'm not trying to offend them, but they never ask the why. See, that's the, the you know, it's very interesting to sit there and talk about it, but then I want to move on about why, where, who, what, what's going on here, right? That's the third category of more of being, uh, God, I don't know what the word is. More of, you know, your, it's all those pieces of imagination and, and trying to really grasp everything, right? It's that final is follow through, right? Action, you know? And I'm not saying I'm best at because I suck too, but I'm just saying that it's that third piece that creates a true friendship, right? And the third, that third part is growing. You want to grow. You know, that you want to, you weren't just exposed to something. You want to take that exposure and grow more with it. You want to go further just beyond. You know, God, you know it's like you start to go, go where no man or woman kind of gone before. The mind just wants to go way out there, right? So, um, anyway, I had this video up here, and I saw this, and that's why this, this screen recorder says one of photographs. I was going to view them because there's a lot of Mandela effects in here. But anyway, so I hope that makes sense, and I know I babble a little bit, but. Uh, the reason I brought it up is because you are going to be very lonely in this world. I, I shouldn't say that. that. I'm not saying you are, right? I am. And I'm not saying because, and I have you friends on this YouTube that we probably have all three of these categories. It's just not in the same place, right? I got to sit down and talk to you for hours, right? But it comes down to that it's really hard to find those three, cat, those three pieces, and, you know, because somebody always disappoints me. Or... You know, even they always have an angle on it. Like, well, you know, what are you gonna do for me? Or, you know, how are you gonna help my situation? It's it's more of a team effort, folks. And, you know, it's kind of like, I can't get that, you know, it's a, a give and take relationship, you know, that we can work together. It's always, well, I'm gonna give to you as long, you know, as long as you give me something in return. It, you know, it's never just, I'm gonna give and let's work as a team. And if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, it doesn't, right? I'm talking about like you know, going to ventures, new businesses, products, inventions, all this. I got a million inventions, by the way, folks. A million in my head. Just all they popping out every day. So I can't even get a business partner to work with me because I can't find that right person that they'll be interested in starting a new, a new adventure with me. It'll last about a week or two and then off, they're off scattered minds on something else. There's no commitment. There's no follow through. There's no you want to join me in starting these new products and services or inventions. I've gone through a, a ton of friends. Yeah, I'm there, Kirk. I'll be right behind you. And then all of a sudden, a couple of days later, God, disappear, right? Anyway, so I hope that was a good value. Give me a thumbs down if not, because I think it's important that we understand that, um, you know, that, you know, it's, it's kind of like the Lord says you're in this world, but not of it. And so you're going to be in here in this, you know, because we can't believe, I can't even believe there's always people still asleep, that they don't really, they don't realize what's happening around them with this whole reality, the, the stock market issues, the, uh, the, uh, I don't want to mention, I don't want to get banned, <laughs> get strikes, but you know all the chaos, right? That they can't see through it. And then if they do see through it, they say, what are we going to do about it? Well, that's true. But, you know, we kind of have to take it as we go. I told you, we're going to try to uh, explain more about how we can influence that and change that through retroactivity and other things like that, okay? But, um, yeah. You know, it's really, really tough because true friendship, it's tough to come by. And I struggle with it very hard. And uh, it's, it, it's, it's, it's lonely and it's sad that, you know, it's... But I see it with other, I see it with other people's YouTube channels. There's uh, the guy, the right side of the brain. I mean, uh, man, he is struggling. I feel bad for him because he said he don't have, he said these people, he has no common interest with them. He doesn't really want to engage him anymore. He said he's, he's worn out. He, he said, I'm done with even uh, the romantic part of this world. And, and he goes, I'm just, he goes, I'm just done, folks. He's not like he's in a bad attitude or depressed. He's just done with the drama. He's done with the games and wants to move forward. You know, he wants to move forward to just a more of an enlightened soul individual being, right? And um, there's a lot of us out there that we're just kind of hanging on, waiting for something to happen, right? And uh, it's sad because he, he, the way he put it, it was kind of interesting. He said, 
it's kind of like you know you're in the classroom and you know everybody's taking the exam or and you're trying to figure out what's going on he goes i he goes raise your hand i figured he goes i i understand he goes i'm awake i see all the stuff he goes you're the first one in the class but then there's nobody else around you so when you go in the playground you're sitting there by yourself in the playground looking at these people going hmm they're over there watching football, playing. You know, I'm using the example. They're, they're playing football and putting the correlation. They're, and those are fun things, right, to do here. But they're just so caught up in the material world and not uh, expanding their spirit and their soul that, you know, they're, you're on the playground. You're like, man, you know, I, I do that all the time. It's like, you know, they're out there. Everybody's just kind of playing games. You got the, you got the boy chasing the girls on the playground you know you see that in the grade school and you you got the the bully picking on the uh the uh the uh nerd over there in the other corner the on that that playground over there by the basketball hoops and then you got the swing set you got somebody over there just swinging and not even care and just doing there and then you got um johnny johnny bowie's over there playing the mud with uh michael throwing mud on each other's face and you know it's like the politicians throwing mud on each other's face and then you got the uh the the gangsters hanging over there in the corner the skateboarders are skating up and down and and i mean see i'm saying it's, it's all a playground in this real it's nobody ever grows up these adults we're just these adults the, the thing is they're more dangerous because now they have uh they've they they never graduated from school they they took that playground attitude and now they use money power weapons political uh, maneuvers to you know the same ones on the playground the bullies and all the other gangsters and all the other people they never grew up it's just a different they just transitioned into a different type of uh, role and it's more dangerous a more dangerous role because at least there was some little bit of control on the playground and it, it's even from the low class to the high class you got the gangsters who you know, they're carrying guns and weapons on the streets versus you know just bullying uh, as gangs on the on the playground right it's and then you got the politicians who are i'm the king of the mountain the king of the hill that are you know instead of throwing uh as you know pushing people down at the top of the hill uh on the playground you are know, on the on the in the playground like um we're on the grassy knoll there they're throwing bombs <laughs> and nuclear weapons and missiles right it's a way more dangerous game and uh so anyway i sorry to ramble about that but it's all it's all there are reality, you know, and you can talk to some people that, you know, just on a common thread. I've talked to teachers and stuff that work in the, you know, in the school system. And um, I was talking to a teacher in Erie, Colorado one time, and I didn't know her very well, but we talked about this. I said, hey, you know, uh, it's kind of sad when you see all these children play on the playground because she's worked at elementary school. And then I said, then you got the same thing happen as adults. And she goes, no kidding. <laughs> she knows exactly. She, she goes, you know, Kirk, she said, um, you know, you, you, you start school as a kindergartner and you kind of, um, you know, you, 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 you're all shy and you're scared and you're trying to get along with everybody. Everybody's nice and all friendly. And he said, by the time they're in the uh, fifth and sixth grade, the elementary levels, she said, they already start their naughtiness. And then she said, you spend the rest of your life trying to unwind all that you, you learned even from the playground. You spend all the time to become a better person. And I thought that was the best thing that anybody ever heard. She says, yeah, we spend the rest of our lives trying to unwind and not get entangled back from what we learned on the playground in the, in the elementary school. And I, I had to laugh because that is the truth. I mean, it doesn't matter who these people are, but, uh, you know, it is, it's the God honest truth. I mean, really. I mean, can't we just get along and just behave proper? I mean, really? <laughs> anyway. So we're talking about that too. Now, also that I used to say that uh, I'm going to throw this out there, and I don't think it's bad or evil or this that. Hopefully not. That there was um, a thought about, you know, is what is the ultimate goal in this world? Is it to be loved or you know give love? You know, give love out to another or love one another, like even the Bible. And you know what? I think you know I used to tell people the meaning of life was to put a meaning to your life. You know, give life a meaning. And I think that's about kind of true because if you try to put a meaning to life, and that could be through love or things like this, but that, uh, but it's not necessarily the key to making people happy or other ones as well. Yes, love's a very important thing, but also having meaning or putting meaning to your life, you know, putting a purpose, right? Because there's a movie that I watched, it's called uh, 
uh, uh, God, what was it? Pre- oh, can't remember. It's about time travel, even. It's about uh, uh, predestined. No, I can't remember. Shoot. Well, anyway, I just watched it the other day. And it was back in movie back in the 80s. I didn't realize it's another one that popped out of nowhere. And uh, I watched it, and that was this. It's about a lady who's you know, trying to find out. She's traveling through time and stuff and trying to resolve why she was having issues with people loving her or loving these, all these things, right? She just, she just wanted true love from the world. And in the end, she kind of figured out, she's like, you know what? I just, it, I don't want to ruin for everybody because you might know the movie or might come across it. But in the end, she kind of just said, she wants a purpose. That that's all she wanted ever. She just wanted a purpose and to have some meaning to her existence. And because um, she struggled. She struggled for nobody loved her from day one when she was born. And uh, it's a long story behind that. So, so think about that. All right. Take care. And I uh, hope everybody uh, um, is having a great evening or day wherever you're at. All right. All right.